Hi, I'm Gary Allen. If you were with us last time, you saw us remodel the landscape in the front yard. Now we return to install landscape and a patio in the back. We've taken this stiff, rigid, square patio, given it a smooth, curved, linear pattern. We'll surface it with a, a slate that's going to be very exciting. Now, when we're done, again, we'll complete yet another designer's landscape. Right now, let's take a moment and reflect on the work in progress. The existing patio Remember, square lines and a rectangular pattern that had grass enclosed all around it. Our goal, our concept here is to again open things up. If you looked at even the patio with the furniture there, it was a little bit cluttered or a little bit crowded. So this extra room is going to not only add circulation and function, but again, we have smoothed it off with a French curve. We've even taken the grass line or the patio line and cut into our existing patio to cut that little square off. We'll come in with a little knee wall, a couple bricks, uh, bricks blocks high, and have a finished slate or stone on all of that. At some point, we need to open up for a gate there. But again, I think you can tell now with uh, the pour that we made, and we can reflect on that too. After we formed it up, we brought it in the concrete, that is one wheelbarrow at a time. Three yards altogether, three cubic yards gave us this new extension, as well as the sidewalk now that will lead all the way to the driveway and the back gate. We have moved our concrete blocks into place here, and so let's talk about this design or this little knee wall that will outline the patio. I'm going to start here in the corner and kind of give you a feel for uh, maybe where we'll have a break in that wall as well. <laughs> I, I'm not used to drawing on concrete, so this is a little bit of a different thought process for me. But again, this little low wall will go in about 16 inches altogether, and at some point we need to break it. And I think we'll end up with a column, let's say, right here. Okay, that can be wider naturally. I hope you can see that. Now, this will be our little break, our entrance into the lawn. One, two, I hope that'll be at least wide enough. And another column of same size, dimension and look, feel and feature are open. And then our wall will continue moving in this direction. There is one thing I want to show you where we cut this old concrete out. Is how we've tried to cut it at least in a curve. And I wanted to make note of one thing. You see old concrete, new concrete, of course, all that is going to change. It'll all be resurfaced with the slate. But I don't think we should stop the wall right here. I think it's too predictable. We need to extend our little stem wall just at least a little bit further. And we've got two things to consider. With a column on the end, we don't want to crowd or cramp our walkway. But I think we've got plenty of mouth or openness here to come in with that third column, which will be the first or the last, depending on how you look at it, right over here. Wow, it's amazing. With the lines here, it already helps shape things up. Now, uh, this is where a design like this can be challenging, but when you get it to this point, it's also rewarding. Now, do you think we should have turf grass meander along the whole entire patio or walk, or wall, I'm sorry, excuse me? Not really, we need some beds here. Now we could leave uh, turf grass along our smooth curve and that would look pretty good. But what I find is uh, sometimes a curve can enhance another curve even, even more so. 
We do need to leave turf grass at least at our entrance to traffic on or off our new patio. And so between the columns and the wall, let's come in with a little bed line that will give us an impression. Uh, what I'm thinking is this one should be made maybe a little bit smaller in size or scope than the bed down here. Again, we've got this big curve and we head in a meandering way down there. So let's act as if this comes right off the column again and really pushes out, okay? Let's push it way out if we can so that it, uh, it'll somewhat scale the size. We could come in with a patio tree inside here and accent that with lighting. That might be a colossal idea. And then we just gradually move into our new pattern that keeps us mowing in a curved, curved situation there. All right, we might not clean these out right away. I think I'll leave the turf in here just for construction purposes until we get to the point where we're ready to plant and install. Wow, even with the design, it's shaping up already. Uh, friends, I want you to meet Lisa Stewart, uh, my friend, and really the supplier here for us today. Uh, Lisa, there seems to be so many types and varieties of stone. How do you know where to begin? Well, it might consider the application you want to do, uh, the color of your home, the roof, uh, how you want to add the, de the, the texture, the depth of field. Well, you've got a wide variety of colors here, uh, ranges from the neutrals to this red, the blue-gray, uh, and you mentioned application. I guess the, some of the thicker stones would be used uh, differently than for the thin or the veneer? Exactly. You might want to stack or uh, build up, use for waterfalls, uh, making steps. And of course the veneers is something that you might want to lay on mortar or you may want to stack it or you could face it. Okay. Well, I will tell you this. Uh, with this application, uh, we will have mortar involved. Yes. Okay. Gary, I wanted to show you some application for some natural stone out here on the waterfall that we've done. Um, of course, we took the big chunky pieces mm -hmm. to the big slabs here to, to make the tiers as it comes down flow. And uh, general use of the small pebble rock, many things that you can do with natural stone. I got you. Yeah, this is a great uh, demonstration. I mean, homeowners and contractors can come in and see what potential would exist in their yard or exactly, on their site. Exactly. Colors. Uh, you might want to add a depth of field in your yard instead of going the same color all over. Just put a few rocks in. I see you've done color. that. You've added uh, different colors. In yes, texture. I have. Yes, and then have. The, the smaller stones are the flat veneers for creating the tiers as you have. That, that's a great application. Exactly. Wonderful, easy application to do that. People think there's a lot of hard work involved in this. And actually, this particular pond with the two waterfalls got installed in two days. A oh, great piece of art, I'll say. Uh, Lisa, I have a sample that I got from the homeowners. Uh, maybe we can see if we can come closer, match that up. Sure, that's a great idea. All right. Gary, I think this stone is a perfect match to your customer sample. Oh, yeah, that looks pretty neat. What, what do you call this? This is the crab orchard. This is a southeastern crab orchard. It's a, a sandstone makeup. Okay, yeah, I've got a uh, little bit of kind of rusty tone in here. Exactly. And some of the taupe or tan. So that, that looks really good to me. Uh, this has got a little kind of pinkish purple in it too, huh? Exactly. You're going to see the same rust tones that you have on different sheets. Uh, and then you're going to see some of the blues and the pinks come in, which is uh, natural for sandstone colors. It varies from the grayish blues all the way to the whites. Okay. Now, we, we're talking about application here. I mean, that's how we really began. And I'm thinking um, this goes in a patio that, that we're going to use mortar with. We put a little stem wall in place, and we want to kind of have the stone crawl up over that. It, will this work for that? Sure, sure. A good stone mason will be able to, uh, the sheets may be too big at first to go up on a small wall, but uh, he can split it and take care of that, and the same stone can be used. Okay. Even this pallet over here, I mean, I, I see some of the gold or the that uh, little rust in there. That that is like just, a perfect match. Just perfect. It all comes out of the same quarry and of course you're going to get the deeper you get the darker colors you go and you want to try to mix some of these colors in so you do have uh, a little more depth in it. A uh, question maybe. Uh, aging and sun, was that does that change the color? Is it 
yes, pretty it, much permanent. Yes, it does. Oh, really? uh, yes, the environment, uh, environmental changes on the stone happen daily. You will see the stone either green or go in a grayish color with some sandstones. Oh. Uh, some of the slates may darker. Okay. And Lisa, you, can, you guys can deliver this for us, hopefully? We sure can. Oh, good, good. This is one of those little table benches that application you talked about. Well, we just put a slab out here to show you. We have some block sandstone underneath and uh, anyone can do this. We've made a couple of benches around the uh, property here, but this is a wonderful crab orchard slab. It can be used to be made a patio. Uh, in this instance, we just made a quick bench out of Looks it. Looks good. Lisa, thanks for all your help. Uh, really appreciate it. Thank you. Well, presto changeo, huh? Well, not really. Let's take a moment and reflect on all the hard work and effort it took us to get to this point. So the big question is now, how can the landscape complement this beautiful hardscape? Now for that landscape to really be a complement, uh, it should possess a, a few natural qualities, that of flow and direction. Low maintenance should be considered. And so our concept here was to open up these lines and make the turf grass easy to mow. But the use of lower maintenance plant varieties, we don't want plants that get five feet tall. So we've come in with the red ruffle azalea, the Aztec grass, and holly fern, even daylilies and boxwood, uh, plants that stay compact in nature and won't get so tall, lower maintenance. So likewise, we should have some similar qualities here. Now along the back of the fence, the glossy green shiny leaf of the gardenia. Beautiful. We can let these get higher. But as we cruise, we want a nice enveloping of one plant. No stiff and stop and start marks. We want one to kind of cascade or cruise into another. So again, we should see repetition from where we came from. A little bit of Aztec grass, daylilies, and boxwood over here to tie in and have the curves completed. I think you can see from reverse angle the flow or interest that we've created. Rather than the bed lines coming out and going all along the fence, you need to push out in some areas to create that extra flow or interest or a focal point. Here we've used the antique roses for that nice focal and I can smell the fragrant flowers already adding to that impact of the landscape. Our goal here for maintenance was to create just one big smooth round circular pattern for our turf grass for ease of mowing. So that brings us back home where we began, right back at our hardscape and our patio. Well, we've taken daylilies under here, a very simple planting, and some dwarf nandinas on the other little bed. And so we've simplified things. A homeowner also has brought in some potted plants that really help soften and decorate the patio also. Now we just have two other points to consider, that of mulching and our nightscaping. Today we ask a very simple but basic question, are all mulches created equal? Well, not at all. There are different sources and resources of the mulches that are available in the industry today. You have 
pine bark taken from pine trees, cypress mulch taken from cypress trees, and hardwoods that are also chipped up into different mulches. But today, we use something unique, different, and much better. Our source of mulch today uh, comes from the eucalyptus trees, a grade A eucalyptus mulch. And some of the advantages are, first of all, this beautiful aromatic smell. Uh, the smell of eucalyptus. Well, with that come some other attributes. And that would be, if you have pets around your home, did you know that the eucalyptus mulch actually helps resist many of the insects found around the home. That's right, uh, roaches and aphids. But more importantly to pet owners, it uh, resists fleas and ticks around the house. So that makes it ideal for pet beds and areas out, outdoor for them. Well, other than the smell, I'll tell you this, this mulch is not chipped, it is shredded. So you have this beautiful interwoven fiber that lock together and won't float or blow away. <laughs> I do love the smell and this is a natural color. Now it does come in other colors but this is natural. It starts out a little blonde and then seems to age very well. The color lasts twice as long as other hardwood mulches and that makes it an attribute for us also. We want to give our customers, well, the best product. Now I should also mention this. In our wetlands, we have cypress trees and other trees that are maybe endangered, you see, and they're being cut down. This product is farm raised. What I mean by that is it's raised on eucalyptus farms where these trees exist. And instead of cutting down the whole tree, they cut out the top section, leave the rootstock, and it regrows. And then they reharvest again. So after decades of time, rather than stripping, clearing and cleaning some of the wetlands, we just have the reintroduction of another crop. And isn't that what real farming is all about? We don't usually talk about maintenance and some of the things that are associated with our new landscape installations, but maintenance is naturally that very big part of the aftercare that keeps everything in shape. What we've done along the fence here is install some Confederate jasmine, Trachylospermum <clears throat> jasminoides. Our goal or purpose here is that these cover and soften the wooden fence. And uh, as a one gallon plant, these come staked and tied naturally so they can work with them in the nursery. What I've done here is untied this. I'm even going to pull the stake out because uh, we're going to kind of get this guy going in his best general direction. I want to take these long leads, stretch them out and see in which direction they favorably want to head first. And I'll somewhat, rather than attaching him, I'll just start to intertwine him in the back and bring them around the front of our wooden fence. You see, like that. And we'll hide him in the back and let him come up too. Now these will work their way upward, no doubt about it. I'll start him through this upper plate and just do a little curve like that. These don't have tendrils like some of the ivies and all that really firmly attach to, to brick and wood and concrete. So they need a little help initially, but what you'll find in the long run is that they will certainly fulfill their commission and do their job of filling this fence. And so this will also, th these can be pruned too, uh, to add some extra reshaping, so to speak. The Confederate Jasmine have a beautiful bloom in the spring of the year, and this is an evergreen shrub. Uh, not being deciduous, it, it will retain its foliage uh, over the winter months, and therefore be permanent as far as the beauty and attractiveness that it is required or admonished to achieve. Now these little tendrils are tender, but also tough enough where none of them really broke. Can you see how I'm, I'm taking advantage of the, the nature of this plant to spread it out? If these that started coming out toward me, they could be clipped or pruned in order to promote this lateral and upward growth that we're establishing. 
So as I move down the road, this guy is already starting to, to take off toward the fence. Different lamps are used in wattages to create different effects, like this illuminator here. Not a plastic feature, but metal. And that will light about a 15 foot radius here. You can use these for pathway lightings, but in this case, a combination of the landscape bed and the sod line. For a little bit stronger fixture and up along houses and homes, the power lighter does a great job there, reaching way up like along the chimney and to frame the house in. Here its application is to blow up the trunks of these trees and the canopy back in the corner. It does a great job. Next we turn our attention to what is referred to as a wall lighter. Uh, this in a triangular type pattern is used commonly to light walls about a 15 to 18 foot height. Uh, a little bit less effective than the wall lighter or the power lighter that we mentioned that really needs to go up high. And we've used this application because they're in these nice easy to install weatherproof cans is to illuminate some of the specimens off the dining room table. We've double lit underneath one of the crepe myrtles to create a beautiful indoor looking out focal point or atmosphere and also the crepe myrtle by the patio as well that is double lit in order to create that atmosphere or illumination from inside or even out on the patio the soft indirect light here the the beauty about these are as the tree or canopy grows it can be adjusted and fine-tuned to tweak either onto the bark or the trunk or even pulling it out as the canopy matures so a nice feature there And finally, we draw our attention to these cute little bell lamps. Uh, they look artistic during the day, but they really do a job at night during the evening. Now, um, you can use these to light along some of the beds or landscaped areas, but here our application is basically for security and pathway lighting off to the patio. Let's talk about our controller installed in a, a very strategic location. This stainless steel box with the timer can be set or adjusted to come on at any time and go off any time during the evening. Now a system like this, uh, basic maintenance or upkeep cost-wise is about $9 to $12 a month. Not bad. That's the benefits of low voltage lighting. It's always exciting when we find new plant varieties to talk about. And at a local nursery, I found this impatience. Now impatience are great for the shade and they flower all through the summer month. What's particularly nice about this is the cherry ice variety is variegated. And it has a double like bloom, that's a flower within a flower, that looks rose-like. This is a great highlight for the shade and it bounces off some of the green plants we have. Nice to introduce that, the cherry ice impatience. Thanks for joining us today. I'll see you again soon. So long.